Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm a bit, bit of a strange fruit here being an infectious disease physician, but we share an interest in sepsis. And I will try to give you an overview of my perspective uh, regarding sepsis and uh, that it, it is a public health problem that we should take seri seriously. This is my disclosures. And as you well know, <coughs> in May this year, WHO came out with a sepsis resolution uh, where they were urging the member states to come up with, uh, to try and solve the sepsis issue. And we have a lot of issues when it comes to sep sepsis. We have to increase public awareness of sep sepsis, maybe through national campaigns, uh, starting patient organizations. We don't know much about the early, I mean, we, we have a lack in biomarkers or uh, methods to early identify the patients before they end up in, in, in the ICU, maybe all already in the am ambulance and so on. Also, uh, the rapid identification of bacteria is not very good. Uh, as you know, in septic shock patients, approximately 20 to 30% are blood culture positive. So 70 to 80 percent are blood culture neg negative and probably in, in the future we will have methods to better identify the, the bug and that will help us uh, institute correct treatment as well. And maybe we should look more to the cancer field and try to subdivide sepsis patients. Sepsis patients, uh, one sepsis patient is not like the other sepsis patient. Just, just like cancer is now 200 different dis, uh, diseases, sepsis is also uh, a variety of dis, uh, diseases. We have like 20, 30 di different bugs, uh, different sites of in infections, and the patient have been sick for different time times when when uh, the patient comes to uh, the the hospital and also a fairly new uh, research field is the long term term follow follow up uh, so a lot of things to do and why bother then one thing is that sepsis can affect and and anyone, but we d we don't know it. This is Muhammad Al Ali, argu arguably one of the greatest athletes of all times, and he died of septic shock uh, a year ago. And very few people know that. Ev everyone knows that he had Parkinson's dis disease, but that he died of sepsis. No, John Paul II, the Pope, also died of sep sepsis. This is uh, King Gustav III who was shot by Ankastrom in 1789, I think. And everyone think he was killed by the shot, but he was shot in, in the shoulder and sur survived. But a week later, he died from sep sepsis. And if you Google, if you type in blood poisoning and celebrities in Aftonbladet or some sim similar new newspaper, you get 40, 50, 60 hits by different celebrities that have suffered from sep sepsis. El Elizabeth Höglund here, she survived. Incidents, is sepsis common? Is it a real pro problem? Well, most studies before have been based on ICD di di diagnosis, and they have given incidence rate from maybe 50 to 300 per 100,000. 100, but there are also studies showing that ICD coding is not very reliable when it comes to s sepsis. There's one Swedish study uh, in indicating that it's an underestimation by a factor of five or sev seven. And here in Scandinavia, this study came out three years ago now from U Udense, where they studied all 9,000 ED visits and did a clinical ev evaluation of the patient charts, and they got an incidence of 456 per 100,000 ED vis visits. And this study was from our group, where we looked at, in Sweden we have a model of, uh, I mean, every time you institute uh, an antibiotics, it, it is red registered, so we took all patients that were on 
that were instituted on uh, intravenous and antibiotics and went through their, their charts to see if they had or developed sep sepsis. And we came up with an incidence of 670 per 100,000. And, and approximately 30% of those were uh, nosocomial sep sepsis. So if you extrapolate that, you could say that approximately 40,000 adult uh, sepsis cases in Sweden ev every year. And if you compare that to the most four most common cancer forms, that's prostate, breast, skin, and bowel cancer, that affects 27,000 in individuals in Sweden. So it's probably more com common than the most common cancer cases. And that is also not very well known. And on a world basis, this paper from 2015 shows that there's probably way over 20,000 million sepsis cases per year. And last year, it was estimated 15.3 million cancer cases. So sepsis is common. This is dangerous. I just like this picture. It doesn't have to really have to anything to do with it, but I read it to you because it's fun. Uh, in 1847, a doctor performed performed an amputation in 25 seconds, operating so quickly that he accidentally amputated his assistant's fingers as well. Both later died of sepsis, and a spectator reportedly died of shock, resulting in the only known procedure with a 300% mortality rate. <laughs> so it is dan dangerous, yes. Mortality rate, depending on the classification, if it's septic shock or sepsis, 10 to 30 percent. And last year, the mortality rate, 28 mortality rate for uh, acute myocardial infarction in Sweden was around 7 percent. So we have around 5,000 deaths of sepsis in Sweden every year, we think. And just to compare again, traffic accident, 275 deaths. Also, I would just mention this briefly because I think this is an extremely interesting field of research where Professor Angus is one of the lead leaders in his group. There's the long-term, negative long-term consequences of that sepsis survivors actually suffer from. One thing is that there are a number of studies now showing that sepsis su su survivors is at a significant risk of a uh, developing uh, cardiovascular dis disease. This paper came out from Örebro just a couple of weeks ago. They looked at all men born between 1952 and 1956 and followed them and looked at ICD coding and those that had sepsis, a sepsis or a pneumonia di diagnosis was put in one, one group and the other ones at, as controls was 246,000 men. Uh, and actually, if you had had sepsis or ne pneumonia, you had a six time, the hazard ratio was over six that you would get an, an cardiovascular e e event within one year after the hospi hospitalization. And the risk was significant up to five years after. So something happens that makes the sepsis patient get cardiovascular disease. Cognitive Im impairment has also been shown. Dementia, impaired quality of life, even small, uh, I mean, uh, milder renal dis dysfunction might actually prove to uh, lead to uh, ne negative long-term consequences. And also they have a lower life ex expectancy. So is sepsis expensive then? Yes, it's the most expensive disease condition in US and European hos oh, hospitals. The cost is immense. Uh, and also, one paper shows that the actual, uh, actual economic burden of sepsis, the, ho the hospitalization only stands for 30% of the total, co total cost. So we would probably earn a lot by earlier identification and better treatment of s sepsis. So sepsis seems to be the most common disease, the most dangerous disease, the most expensive disease. So is it the w most well-known disease? We asked this question in 2015. We did a Swedish sur survey and asked a couple of 
questions about different dis diseases. And what we found was that Swedes are very, very well educated when it comes to knowing about different disease con conditions, all but sepsis. Only 21% of adult Swedes had heard about sep sepsis. So this is not good. And this is unfortunately the same thing all around the world. Germany and the United States are actually leading this. Up to 50% of uh, the population knows about sepsis, but Sweden is really in the backwater of, of this. So we have a lot of efforts to do uh, to increase uh, awareness around sepsis, I think. So, diagnostics. How can we ident identify sepsis patients early? We have a time window. There are a lot of studies show showing that approximately 20 to 30 percent of the patients with sepsis or septic shock, they actually don't have signs of organ dysfunction when they present at the emergency de department. So if we have a method to identify these patients already in the ambulance or at the e emergency de department, potentially we can treat, treat them and stop the uh, or organ dis dysfunction from occurring. But early uh, identification of sepsis is difficult, as you all, all know. We all have stories like this. Patient not feeling well, con contacting the emergency un unit ambulance comes there. They don't really understand what is going on. Anxiety attack is a quite common di diagnosis, but it might well be se sepsis as well. This is Sharsad Ki Kiawas, is, who is also a sepsis ambassador, and it's one of the board members of Swedish Sepsis Fond Fonden. Uh, now she's actually competing for Sweden in uh, tri triathlon. Uh, she was uh, at the Paralympics in Rio and came in fifth or sixth, I think. So she's doing quite, quite well. But as you all know, early identification of sepsis is very hard, but it's very important as, as well. So how do we do it now? Triage systems or bio biomarkers. There are no really good early bio biomarkers ava av available today. So we did a su survey asking. There is apparently 71 emergency department in s uh, departments in Sweden, and 88 percent of those use the RETS triage system, the Rapid Emergency Triage and Treatment s System was developed in Gothenburg, I think, and it's not at all validated, to my knowledge. 5% use QSOFA at the moment. And th ar approximately 30% of the EDs do not have routines for when to contact an intensivist or an infectious disease specialist if they suspect sep sepsis. And around 30% lack standardized gu guidelines for the treatment of septic patients in the in the ED actually so just want to mention this a lot of people of you already know about this this is the sepsis al alert initiative where they use the red uh, reds five different vital or six different vital parameters blood pressure respiratory rate saturation pulse uh, consciousness and lactate and if you have one of these and a suspicion of an infection, then the pre the, the am ambulance or the ED per personnel uh, punches the uh, sepsis alarm. And this means that they have some specific guidelines for fluid and sampling, and they also, an infectious disease phys phys physician comes to see the patients at w as well. And this is used now in Skåne and in Stockholm and in Gotland to my knowledge. And is this good? Maybe. Sepsis is highlighted. There is like a push for sepsis, at, uh, which is good, I think. It has quite a high specificity. Around 70 to 80 percent of the sepsis alerts actually have sepsis when we retrospectively go back and look, uh, e evaluate the charts. Um, 
rapid detection, uh, detection and treatment of the most severe cases is probably good. Uh, the sepsis alert patients have a mortality, 28 uh, mortality of a little bit over 20% and a one year mortality of over 50%. So they are quite, quite sick. And of course, I think that it's good that an ID physician is involved early in the care of a sepsis pa patient. Cons? Possibly early anti antibiotics. Uh, it's mainly shown to be beneficial in shock patients. And maybe there's a risk that the stress, because the, 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 the outcome is, is that you should give antibiotics very earl early. So the me median time now in Lund in, uh, uh, to when a patient comes in through the door and receives antibiotics is down to 15 minutes or, or s something. So it's very, very... Uh, stressful actually and that could uh, have a negative impact on the culturing and di diagnostics I, in my, my view. It has a low sensitivity actually. We've gone through a couple of, of our ED cohorts re retrospectively and we find that the sepsis alert only identifies approximately 35 patients, 35 per percent of the patients with community acquired sep sepsis. And it's resource dem demanding. So it's not perfect and it has a low sen sensitivity. So what do we do? Why not keep looking for a bi biomarker, an early bi biomarker? And where should we look for an early biomarker? biomarker. If you have the sepsis progression with the infection, neutrophil activation is very early, early and it goes on with the co coagulopathy, endothelial in involvement, vasodilatation. Today we use lactate and lactate is biologically a late marker of sepsis. So we should look here in my view and yeah, we have been do do doing that. So one protein that this, this is a biomarker that we will actually start using in real life in Lund and Hel Helsingborg in a few, few weeks. It's heparin binding protein, uh, uh, also called azurocytin. And what I think is good with this is that this has biological plausibility to be an early sepsis mark marker. And why? because it's stored in neut neutrophils, which are very early at the site of in infection. It's prefabricated, so it doesn't have to be produced after stim stim stimuli. It's already there. It's the only neutrophil protein that is stored in the secretory ves vesicles, which are the first to exocytose. It has been shown that it induces vascular leakage, which is a key feature in Sep sepsis and also it has been shown that bacterial structures induces the release of HBP. This is the publication from uh, Nature in 2001 with Gautam et, et al. Sh they uh, introduced different neutrophil protein into the vessels of this hamster pouch mod model and they could show that only HBP had a cap capability of inducing vascular leak leakage. So this is was interesting and we and also other groups have studied this in clinical samples and we have shown that HPP actually is ele elevated in the sepsis cases and not in the milder in infections. But the most interesting thing is that HPP levels seems to be elevated up to 12 hours before the patient has clinical signs of organ dysfunction. So it might be an early mark marker. And yeah, it, wa it was a better predictor of progression to organ dysfunction in the patients that presented without organ dysfunction in the ED but went on to develop organ dysfunction. Their HPP was a better marker than the standard markers that we, we use. And this was val validated in an um, in, in international multicenter setting where we also had sites in the U US, can can Canada and several sites in Sweden. So maybe HPP 
is uh, of some help, at least in the e ED. And we have tried, tried this uh, uh, to look if HPP adds some information. This is the specificity here, sensitivity. And if you look at the Q sofa, you see that it has a very, very high specificity. This is an ED co cohort from Sweden and the U US of 700 patients that we looked uh, at retrospectively. We could also see that adding lactate to QSOFA does not add, add much. The sepsis al alert also has a very high specificity, but a relatively low sensitivity of around uh, 40%. But adding HPP might increase sen sensitivity. So th this is something that we might try, at least in, uh, in Lund and Hel Helsingborg next year. So conclusions. Sepsis, as you all know, is a serious health, public health pro problem. The incidence of sepsis is higher than previously anticipated. The awareness of sepsis is low. Long-term outcomes should be better explored. Maybe we should start post-sepsis clini clinics. Sepsis guidelines in Sweden is not equal, and we, we don't. I mean, around 30% do not have specific focus on se sepsis in the ED, ED. And HPP finally might be a promising biomarker in the early identification of sepsis in the ED. And finally, just some. PR for Swedish sepsis fonden. We have some sepsis ambassadors and we celebrate World Sepsis Day. You all know World Sepsis Day is on the 13th of sep September and we kick off early tomorrow at Stortoriet. So you're welcome to come around and uh, yeah, celebrate with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Adam, for that very informative and a very entertaining lecture, actually. So um, I have, uh, while Frederick looks up the, uh, the uh, computer, I have a question for you. Um, you've been very, very much involved in, uh, in increasing the awareness of sepsis, but we do know that sepsis disproportionately affects the vulnerable population. Yes. Uh, what would you? What What are the the measures that you will be taking to to increase awareness of us as healthcare professionals? Just in this, because we are the ones that are exposed to that just exactly that kind of population. How you would increase awareness among among the healthcare persons? Yes, I'm thinking about nosocomial infections, yeah. post-operative infections. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I, I think, um, first of all, uh, th there needs to be some sort of implementation of, you know, either the RITS or the Q sofa. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not really sure why Q sofa hasn't really taken off uh, here in Sweden. I don't know how well implemented it is in the U.S. and Canada. Um, and it's interesting. Uh, if, if I don't know whether RETS is validated, but you, you, you're telling uh, me that not it's much not uh, in sepsis. Nothing. There was actually one study coming out from Nor Norway just a couple of weeks ago. Um, but other other than that, not to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. But uh, everyone u uses it, it. It seems. But I don't know. We have some questions from the app there. And what about with the uh, heparin binding protein in, in uh, neutropenia? Not of much use, since it's um, a protein that comes from the neutrophils. So uh, neutropenic patients do not do not have um, HPP. Um, do you think uh, HPP will work as a predictor of sepsis after surgery or, tra or big trauma? Maybe, but it's so confounded in that. It's, it's a bit cleaner in the e ED, but it, I mean, it, it is associated with uh, mortality and the development of AKI and a ARDS, organ dysfunction. So it, it might be, be of, of use, but I'm not sure if it's better than lact lactate and other markers in that setting. Uh, I think the main benefit would be in the uh, emergency department, I think. Yeah. 
All right, if there's uh, no other burning questions, we're running a bit short of time. Thank you so much, Thank Adam, much. for coming and good luck. Uh, yeah.